Hello everyone, this is Sam Spate with another tutorial in the Coding Fundamentals in GML 2.3 series. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about chained accessors. With 2.3, you can now chain accessors, and this is actually pretty incredible. While it's a very small change, it's a huge quality of life increase because chained accessors let you access data inside of a nested data structure in a single line of code. And you can go as deep as you want. So as deep as your nested data structures go, you can go as far in as you want and grab that data in a single line. And you can still, of course, pull out internal data structures and assign it to a variable if you want. And in some cases, you'll still want to do that, but you no longer have to do that to access data internal to deeply nested data structures. So of course, this means that you should know your accessors, there are four data structures that use accessors, arrays, lists, maps, and grids. The array accessor is the at sign. There are many instances where you don't need to use it and some where you do. This is covered in the array tutorials, but lists, maps, and grids always require the use of an accessor. The list accessor is the pipe symbol, the map accessor is the question mark, and the grid accessor is the hash or pound sign. Over here, you can see example uses. Note that they always go after the open bracket and then before whatever you use to find that place in the data structure. So position for arrays and lists, the key for map and column and row for grid. So a quick example, let's say that you have a map that has two lists and this list has two arrays and this list has one array. Now you can access the values inside of this array in a single line of code. So this is just a generic structure. Let's assume that the top level map is actually stored in a variable called map and that the key to the first list is lists. If we wanted then to come into this array and set the zeroth position of this array to hello world, what we would say is map, the map accessor, lists, which again we've said is the key to this list, the list accessor, the position in the list, so zero, that would be the first position in this list, and then zero, the first position in this array, and we would say equals hello world. So we can come all the way into this array and change data inside of this array in a single line of code. And of course, the process to getting the data out of a nested data structure is the exact same. If we wanted to save the variable that we just set in this array out, we would say map lists zero, so this position, and then hello world, the zeroth position in this array. Let's actually jump over to GameMaker Studio and see a couple more examples of this. Here we are in GameMaker, and I've created a small diagram of what our nested data structures will look like. I actually do this all the time when I'm coding so that I can remember how things are laid out. But we're gonna have the top level be a map, the map will hold lists, and then the lists will hold arrays. So we can come down here and create those data structures, DS map create, we can create our list A, list B, then we can add list A and list B to our map, and then we can add to our lists several arrays. So now let's say we want to get the value hello world from this array. Well, this is the array. This is the first array in our list, which is in our map. So, so we would say map list A, then the position in our list, which is the zeroth position, and then the zeroth position of the array. And that should get hello world. And you don't always have to go as far in as you want. You can go to any level that you want. So let's say we wanted to return this whole array. Then we would just say list A, and then the first position in the list. So this is the zeroth position and then the first position, and that would be our number array. You can set things in the same way with map list B, so we'd be in the second list, and then our first position in this list, which would be here, so zero, one, and then nice weather we're having, isn't it? And we would change this question. But now let's run it in the debugger where I think it will be even more clear. So here we go, let's create our maps and lists. Let's add the lists to the maps. And now let's add our arrays to the list. So now we can come over here and we can say view our map as a map, then view each list as a list. And we can see that we've created this structure up here where we have our map and then our two lists and then each list has an array. So now let's look at how chaining accessors works. So we have our map here and we can see that the first thing we wanna access is list A, then zero, then zero. So here we go, we've got our map, list A, then zero, and then zero. So you can see it right there, that chain, list A, zero, zero, gives us hello world. And indeed, if we go along, we can see that greeting now contains the value hello world. And if we say list A one, we would expect to get list A one, this whole array. And now if we go look at our number array, we can see that this number array, one, two, three, F, E, O, O, is the same as this number array, 
one, two, three, F, E, O, O. And we can come over here to list B, list B, one, zero. And actually, I'm going to need to look at it over here because as soon as I advance this step on the debugger, uh, we're going to lose focus on this instance. So if I come over here, we have our map, list B, one, zero, map, list B, one, zero. Currently, how are you? This should change to nice weather we're having, isn't it? And there we go. It's changed. So hopefully seeing this in the debugger really makes it clear what chaining accessors is doing. We're really just following down this path where at each level we go in as directed. So if we say list B one zero, we say we go list B one zero. Again, always making sure to use the correct accessor for the data structure. So list B being a list, we have to make sure to remember the list accessor when we want to go in. And when we're using the arrays, we use the array accessor, or in this case, we're not using any accessor because that's valid and allowed with arrays. So in summary, with chained accessors, you can now access data in a single line of code. You can go as deep as you want into your nested structures, and it works for arrays, lists, maps, and grids. And the accessors that you need to use are right here, with the addition that arrays can also be referenced without using an accessor. The links in this slide will be below, along with links to the slides themselves and the source code. And that's it. Thanks for watching.